Today we're going to talk about uh, EV uh, charging stations, EV ports, uh, with Ryan Graham, uh, a, uh, an engineer with uh, uh, Kimley Horn. He's the EV charging practice leader at Kimley Horn. Kimley Horn's a, um, a, a distinguished uh, engineering and planning firm. Uh, and they've designed, uh, planned, or implemented, permitted something like 15,000 EV chargers in more than 40 states uh, around the country. And Ryan's kind of the go-to guy on EV ports at uh, at Kimley Horn. So, Ryan, we wanted to talk you uh, talk more about the business aspects uh, or the financial and uh, planning aspects of this. And I understand there are several different models of uh, how. Uh, a developer and and the developer's AEC team uh, can uh, model what's what's the best way to put in uh, and charge for uh, the the EV ports. Could you could you run down that uh, the, the the types yeah. of uh, uh, of models that are out there right now? Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. So you know, I think we always try to start with the third party operation. So that's when a site host goes to a third party. You know, think. Volta and Electrify America and EVGO and those companies where they come in and they they install and they own and operate the equipment for you, it's sort of hands off, right? Mm -hmm. The one thing I would be clear of there is not every site will meet those clients' models because those folks have a business model need as well. But that's a great win-win for developers if they want to be hands off. Um, the other way to go about it would be to actually purchase the equipment. And so you can buy the equipment outright, you own and operate it yourself, or perhaps pay another company to operate it for you. And that gives you more control of how you charge and how you draw your revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Where in the third party option, you're really locked into your agreement with the provider and how they allow revenue sharing. Mm -hmm. And then the third major version of, of the business model, there would also be a lease. And so again, it's gonna vary provider to provider, but typically it's like a, a car lease. You're paying a certain amount per month. After three or five years, you can either keep the equipment you know, give the equipment back or upgrade to the newest model mm -hmm. at, at a high level. Mm -hmm. And on the on the lease, uh, is the um, uh, entity that's uh, doing um, that's that ha holds the lease. Um, are they who's responsible for like maintenance? Like if you know the equipment gets, I've seen smashed smashed yeah. up EV ports uh, and 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 so forth. Who's who's responsible for that for the maintenance on that? I'm glad you asked. And that's a really important topic we always want to bring up. So typically, it's going to be a balance. I would say during most of the leasing options, the OEM or the charging provider will handle any you know, remote updates. So say the software goes down and needs to be fixed, that's on the provider to fix. Yeah. But a lot of times the actual you know, getting your hands dirty and going and fixing an electrical wire or conduit yeah. or issue in the field isn't going to be covered by them. And that's more of an electrical, you know, mm -hmm. contractor or local electrician that you would need to hire, have on staff. Mm -hmm. Now, in some cases, the developer owns and operates, right? And, and but yes, that's not allowed uh, in, in, in many states because uh, an, in, an individual entity can't uh, charge for electricity, something, some problem with that is that what's the, what's the deal on that? Yeah. So it, again, it depends on the state and depends on which utility is serving you. But a lot, I think they don't disallow it, but what they don't allow you to do is charge what you want. You are locked into an exact rate and markup on electricity, essentially. And if you try to change that, then to your point, you would be considered an electric utility. And obviously there's lots of hoops and you don't really want to do that as a developer typically. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, that's why folks don't have as much control in that scenario, charging per kilowatt. Right. And again, it's going to vary by state. But another way to get around that is to charge by time or to think about this as a parking amenity and charge for the parking space itself. Yeah. Uh, OK, um, that that would be uh, and, and remind me, uh, Kimberly Horn has has done installations and permits primarily in uh, retail settings and multifamily and um uh, uh, kind of uh, general commercial and in, in, uh, institutional and in, industrial buildings um uh in multifamily uh how's it working in multifamily uh you know uh, 250 unit you know fairly high end uh, market yeah. rate to luxury uh, apartment complex how's it working there yeah in, in the past you've seen a lot of folks implement it as an amenity and actually offer it for free 
Mm. Well, where the market is now, it's already organically growing as far as EV ridership. So we actually don't recommend that anymore. You're not providing gasoline. So why provide electricity for free, right? And so typically I would say it's going to be per kilowatt. You know, I live there. I use my account. I, I pay for my charging and it goes that route. Another way that folks have done it is, you know, and especially maybe if they're in an early adoption area where it's not going to be utilized as much, it is included in my rent or, you know, I pay a monthly parking pass to get access to it. And that helps a developer when you know, utilization is low in the early days to cover the cost of, of the upfront investment a little bit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, uh, 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 again, on, on multifamily, I, and I guess even on commercial, yeah. uh, what, uh, what percentage, specifically like, like on multifamily, what percentage of uh, spaces within the uh, garage, whether that's outdoor or, or covered, uh, are you recommending these days, Ryan? Yeah, so um, it's going to depend a little bit, but generally you're seeing anywhere from a 5 to a 25% range. And so, you know, mm -hmm. what I would do is I would look at the local site, I would check ridership, I would check, you know, average income and other demographics to make sure we're right sizing that. But yeah. I think the biggest thing is future proofing for more, no matter what you put in. You install 5% yeah. today, future proof for 20. And uh, one other quick blurb there. A lot of jurisdictions are trying to require this. I mean, California as a state, New York as a state, Atlanta as a city, Colorado as a state. Yeah. So it, it's coming as a requirement whether or not folks do it. Yeah, you got to check your regs and and uh, make sure you're complying. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be in a lot. And I, I I gather there's uh kind of like here's a here's a uh, ten percent fully installed, ready to go, and then maybe another ten percent uh, where you've got. Uh, electrical uh, access and uh, it, you, you know you can put it in later as as you grow is that is that a good model absolutely I think that's the biggest part that we want to highlight is doing that well spend the money now and invest up front and it'll be much more cost effective and having to go back and retrofit tear up more dirt drill more holes in your parking garage you know have the conduits the infrastructure there today and that way all you have to do is come in pull a wire install a charger much much easier you know saves yeah. you time money on the road not, not, not nice work if you can get it with with most developers right <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> what's the, what's the biggest mistake that biggest mistake you're seeing out there and you say you, you tear your hair out or what's left of mine and uh and uh you, you say geez I, uh, why this this happens all the time and i wish it wouldn't happen what what what, what, what what's the one the thing that bugs the bugs the heck out of you yeah, I think there's two. I think just folks sitting on the sideline for too long and just not implementing because they they don't know what to do or they're not bought in yet. And I, and I understand that. But what I would say is investing now is going to save you money down the road. We all know how expensive it is to retrofit any kind of property from the development mm -hmm. industry. This is no exception. And then it also adds value to your portfolio as well, right? If you have the base infrastructure right, the last thing I would say, maybe more in the design community, but it affects everybody is these get treated like just another outlet, like just another charging outlet in your home or in your amenity building. And, you know, it's really not. There is a lot of considerations as far as charging speed, numbers, type of technology, where it's implemented. There's just a lot to it. And so I would just encourage folks to make sure they're thinking about this holistically from a planning and engineering standpoint, because nobody wants to have a charger that doesn't work. Um, there's lots of online forums where if you have a charger that doesn't work, you will be well known and not for a good reason. Right. Yeah, and so okay. it's just really important to think through that. OK, that's great. Um, yep. What's it what's it costing to install a typical port these days? Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to vary a little bit on charging speed. Right. But level twos, you know, it, you're talking about the lower end being in the couple thousand dollar range and the higher end being in the maybe ten to fifteen thousand dollar range per port. Um, when you get in the DC fast, that can go up 10 times, truthfully. Um, but if we're talking about multifamily, you know, typically DC fast is not required in multifamily unless you're having a public charger, you know, at a mixed use development. Really, level two is going to get you what you need there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ADA factors in this? Yeah. So the, the Access Board recently um, released some recommendations and some guidelines. I would say know that in and out, make sure your consultants know that in and out. There are certain states that have requirements in addition to the feds. 
know, California and Texas and New York being three of those. Um, and I'm sure more will come out as new building codes are developed. Um, but it's what, very what, what what is the specific uh, disability aspect that's that's being uh, uh, regulated here? Equal facilities, essentially, oh, right? Okay. So, so, <laughs> so making sure that somebody you know has access to an EV charger, no matter what, right? So um, if you have gasoline vehicles, you have to have an accessible spot, right? Well, same for EV, and they can't count together; they actually have to be separate. Again, equal facilities. And we could go into that code section for an hour, but I won't do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. All right. Um, and finally, uh, I understand that you're uh, you've been involved with something called Drive Electric Tennessee uh, at www.driveelectrictn.org. We'll put a little note up there about that. Just briefly, what what is Drive Electric Tennessee, uh, Ryan? Yeah. So it, it's a group of folks in the industry who are trying to help drive more electric vehicle adoption in the state of Tennessee. Um, so we're, you know, we're running programs like ride and drives, and there's some really awesome partners who are leading the, the charge there. I'm just joined as a member and trying to do my part, um, particularly we're on the infrastructure working group. And I, I think we've talked about it a little bit, but we're going to be actually working on a developer's guide for EV at multifamily. And I think we're a few weeks to a month away, but would obviously love to release that to this group and you know, just try to keep everybody informed and help you take steps forward. To implement this technology to support the growth of the market. Mm -hmm. That would be a valuable document when uh, when it's ready and and when it is, we'll we'll post it and uh, let our readers and audience uh, members know. Well, thank you so much for your time. I've been speaking with Ryan Graham, who's the uh, EV charging practice leader at uh, uh, the engineering planning firm Kimley Horn. We've been talking about uh, EV ports and uh, the future. I guess I don't know. I, <laughs> you know got to get me a used Tesla someplace. I don't know where. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> okay, no, thank Ryan. you very much for having me. Thank you for the time. Great to talk with you. Thanks. Bye. Good one.